frequently. All right. Thanks for the introduction, Devani. My name is Zachary Lerner. I'm the services lead on the business requirements team within the catalog management office. Uh, today I'll be talking about, oops, I said I have AWF there. Let me just quickly fix that up. Your vendors. Um, for you, the, the mass vendors uh, preparing for services being uh, onboarded in the FAST catalog platform. Um, if and uh, this is going to be something that affects current users, but then all mass contracts eventually, as your contracts are brought in and you start managing your catalog using the FAST catalog platform. Um, and so there's an immediate audience, which is folks who are already in the platform who are going to have the services workflow turned on for you. Uh, but then down the line, this may become important to you uh, if you continue to actively manage your mass catalog using the FAST catalog platform, which will be a reality for all mass contracts. Uh, as we as we work our way through with the thousands and thousands of contracts that are out there. Um, so that's setting the scale of, of why uh, this might be important to you. Um, just so you know, um, because uh, there we have about 1700 vendors that are already in the catalog uh, and who are going to be affected by this change. Um, if you're not already in there, some of this may sound um, new and hard to understand. Um, there are a lot of resources out there. Um, I would, uh, and I will make those available to you, um, or we'll talk about them a little bit further on in the presentation. So if you're just holding on for dear life right now, trying to figure out what we're, what we're talking about, this is going to be a little bit more uh, in the weeds, maybe than just an introduction to the fast catalog platform. Um, we have been talking about it a lot, but it's always new to somebody. So just setting the table there um, as we go through this presentation, this is going to be for folks who are mostly for folks who are going to be affected by the services workflow being turned on in the fast catalog platform, which means current users. Um, so the, the, the outline for this is that we're going to go through the timeline. When are all these changes going to happen, including onboarding, um, which is when a contract that isn't managed through the fast catalog platform becomes a cat contract that is managed through the fast catalog platform. Uh, sometimes I'll call it the FCP for short. Uh, and then uh, what that prompt is going to look like, um, what are some of the benefits to you uh, when you're using the services workflow versus uh, managing it through a traditional price proposal template? I think for most people managing services, they're using a services and training PPT. Um, what does support look like? Um, one of the key decisions that'll be made um, by you, the vendor in conjunction with uh, your counterpart in the portfolio, usually a CS a contract specialist or a CO contracting officer, about the decision of whether or not to use a product file, a services plus file, or a traditional price proposal template. Um, services plus file is more than just services. Uh, actually, the way to think about all that stuff is where does this information actually go? The product file publishes to GS Advantage. The services plus file um, publishes a price list to the Advantage environment. So uh, a formatted spreadsheet in the and on GSA Advantage, GSA eLibrary, and GSA eBuy. It's a big difference. We'll get a little bit more into that as well later. Um, so again, this is what's happening. Uh, in mid-November, we're targeting November 18th. It's not 100% solidified, but that's the date we have to work with right now. Um, there are about 1,658 vendors. Uh, the number fluctuates with active contracts who are going to have to make a decision on whether or not they continue to manage um, a product catalog only um, through the product workflow, or if they want to also manage a services catalog. Um, some folks have been managing services using price proposal templates. Um, in the fast catalog platform, they will now have the choice to use a services plus file in addition to their product file in the fast catalog platform. Um, when they use the services workflow to, to manage their services catalog, um, the FCP will auto publish a price list to the Advantage environment. I just mentioned that. Um, replacing the pricing information manually appended to a terms and conditions file. So, right, so auto publish versus manual. Um, for those folks who do manage a services, uh, a mass services contract right now, your experience is probably, you know, you use uh, eOffer, eMod to upload um, all of your information. Your catalog, of course, is contained within the price proposal template. And then after that's awarded, you then have to go and append that information, your price list, 
to the end of a terms and conditions file, which is a word format or a PDF format, or maybe in some cases an Excel format. That's fairly rare. It's usually word or PDF. Um, and that goes through another layer of review. Uh, and then it's published to the Advantage environment in GSA Advantage, eLibrary, and, and eBuy. Um, and so when you're using the Fast Catalog platform and the Services Plus file in the Services Workflow, um, all the pricing that you have within the Services Plus file minus any sensitive information is automatically published. So you don't have to include that information in your TNC, and it actually takes out a whole round of reviews um, that you'd be responsible for. Um, right. All new FCP vendors will have the option to manage products or services when general onboarding resumes in January 2025. So this decision is coming to these 1658 sooner rather than later, uh, but eventually it's going to come to everyone. Okay, um, so where, where are we sitting in, in the scheme of things? Um, we have been testing out the services workflow uh, with a pilot, uh, pilot A, pilot B, um, 22 vendors in total. Managing, managing services contracts. Uh, some of them also had products and services contracts, so they're doing both at the same time. But Pilot C really uh, greatly expands the number of um, industry partners who are able to use the services workflow. Um, so training is going to begin, well, this is an overview, but we're counting it as training, um, begins in late October, early November, and would continue probably through December um, now that we've reoriented towards mid-November for the launch. Um, Pilot C, existing vendors opt into services. Um, we'll get to it in a later slide, but what you'll be seeing as part of the opt-in is uh, an explicit ask to vendors who've already gone through the baseline to make a, make a call of whether or not you, what workflows you're using. Um, come January, we're going to resume product contract onboarding. So we've already been mostly doing uh, product contracts or maybe entirely doing product contracts. I don't know why I said mostly. Um, as part of um, the FCP, that's where we started. The MVP for the Fast Catalog platform was to help vendors publish their product catalogs to GSA Advantage. Um, and then also we're going to begin services TDR contracts. So services vendors who are participating in the TDR program um, are going to be prioritized for onboarding. Um, in February, there's going to be uh, something called, you know, not to utterly confuse you, but like another pilot, what we're calling Pilot D, but also it's it's a PPT only workflow. Um, so if you are have services or products and they don't belong on, G, they don't, they shouldn't be sold on GSA Advantage, or they don't quite fit because you're using a unique uh, price proposal template. Um, and so you're not going to be publishing a price list auto or auto publishing a price list to the GSA Advantage environment. You will need to use a PPT, uh, and the PPT only workflow is being stood up. It, it's an option right now, but it's glommed onto existing workflows. So we're separating it out to simplify it, um, and hopefully that simplification uh, does what it's intended to do. Um, and then part of it, we're just going to reassess how successful um, services is and whether we can bring up the amount of contracts we're, we're uh, onboarding, if the rate can be increased, um, or if we can just move forward as is. Okay, so just a quick heads up, right? So like I mentioned services pilot A and B, uh, there are 22 pilot vendors, all of whom have completed a seller profile. Um, I, again, we're intermediate, I'm assuming, I, I don't wanna assume that everyone knows what a seller profile is. Um, when you use a fast catalog platform, there's something called first steps. You're new to the you're new to the platform. There are some things that you must do uh, when you're first using the platform, and a seller profile is one of the very first things. So everyone's done that, uh, and then you're brought into hey, doing your baseline. Um, if you're a services contract, which is what this pilot is meant to address, um, those 22 are all in some various uh, level of engaging with um, their services baseline. Some have published, which is green. Uh, some are blue, which is meant they've passed validation. Uh, some are in the process of going through validation, which means they've submitted a services plus file, gotten an error back and are addressing it. Um, some tried and we're like, no, I'm going to try with a different file or a different set of information. Some are entirely new. Uh, and then uh, vendor action is, I'll call that off the top of my head. Um, products baseline, at least a couple of the vendors have product baselines they're going to do in addition to their services baseline. This is a proven workflow. Um, and finally, after you upload 
your services plus file and you generate auto by auto publishing a price list, um, you still have to update your terms and conditions file, but you'd be updating it by just submitting like the answers to the 26 questions that are already there. So you wouldn't be including any pricing that's already in your price list because it's auto publishing to those environments. So why have it in two places where one of them is manually entered where you can fat finger things, which I do all the time, um, or, um, you know, because there's a review period, sometimes the pricing in your TNC can be out of sync where it might show up in other parts of the system. Like for example, your auto published price list. And I see questions coming in. Um, hopefully my panelists are seeing those as well, but if they're not answering them, that means that um, they're saving them for me at the end. So I'm going to just work my way through this presentation uh, and then um, get to any kind of remainders, so to speak. Okay, uh, so what have we learned from the pilot? Um, people that are using the services workflow, it's important to you because the people that are testing out the services workflow are teaching us how to better help you uh, when we turn on the services workflow for everyone. Um, so that's why I'm sharing this information. Um, if you have, if your services catalog or the part of your catalog that is services oriented is mainly driven by LCATs, um, good news, right? You know, usually LCATs catalogs are based on the smaller side, 200 line items. I'm sure there might be someone on the, the call who has, you know, laughing at that, right? Like we have like a, a million line items for their products catalog. LCAT catalogs are generally small. They generally have less than 200 line items. Um, some can be bigger, but mostly that's where they're sit. They're sitting. Um, so in, when we start Pilot C, um, there are going to be a more more catalogs with a varied composition. Um, the services workflow, the services plus file all handle, handle LCATs effectively. Um, and what we've seen uh, when vendors are bringing their information in, so the hardest part of what's happening is taking your information from your legacy or your traditional PPT where you've submitted your recent mods or your offers that has all the information that was in there initially and bringing them over to the services plus file. So transferring that information. The older the PPT, uh, and we've seen cases where some PPTs are like seven plus years old, had set it and forget it pricing. Um, and you know we're just content with just leaving the pricing as is and your relationship with the acquisition workforce was such that it wasn't uh, changed over much. Um, the older the PPT, uh, just the sort of bigger the logical leap of, you know, where does this go from here to this new uh, SPF? So that's where we hear the majority of the work comes. And that's not a huge surprise. Um, but the other thing is because people are bringing stuff over from one template to another, they're copying and pasting, which is logical. Um, um, but some of the answers for some of these fields has changed. Uh, predominant worksite being one of them, right? Um, it's it is what the title says it is. You have to identify where the work site is, where most of the work takes place. Doesn't mean that work can't take place at both of them, but for the purpose of capturing this for the catalog, we're asking vendors that are using the services plus file to identify one of them. Again, so if you had something that said, I do work in both places, we're asking you to say, where does most of the work take place? Uh, and if it's 50-50, right down the middle, give us the one that uh, leads to a higher ceiling price. So, but that's, that's something that, is absolutely an issue that is coming up that people have questions about. The answer is is out there, um, but if you're copying and pasting from one template to another, um, you'll run into it. Um, remember to use formulas for pricing. Uh, uh, you know, if you're if you're copying and pasting again, it's a good way to check it because if your numbers don't work, it won't pass validation. Um, and then confusion on whether or not to use a PPT versus the SPF, right? Um, submitting a terms and conditions file without a price list. Uh, this is new behavior, right? Terms and conditions files have always had the pricing appended to it. Um, and so the the default is, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. But really, if it's in the services plus file and it's auto-publishing that price list, um, you really don't want to have the same pricing showing up in two places at once, especially because of our it's likely that they're not going to match up 100%. Or if they do, the next time you do a mod, you'll just have to update it again. So really recommending going just with the price list and not having that pricing in the TNC file. Um, again, so PPT and SPF, right? Um, services plus file, SPF, PPT, price proposal template. I apologize for acronyming you. Um, but the choice to do one versus the other, 
err on the side of using the services plus file saves a lot of work. Okay, did I wanna say anything else about this information? Right, uh, the other thing I would say is for folks who have been using a, a PPT to manage a services catalog, um, I understand that your experience traditionally is that you're using, um, that you submit it in EMOD, it's reviewed by the acquisition workforce. Um, you know, there's some discussion there. When you are using the FAST catalog platform for a services plus file, it will go what we're calling a review of validation and business rules. This is a system driven review of the template that you're uploading. Um, and so you will get something almost certainly the first time that you're submitting it called an error file. It tells you, hey, this number doesn't add up or hey, um, you, enter, you entered um, text here, we need numbers. Um, don't use a, a percentage uh, symbol or a dollar symbol when you're submitting numbers. We just want the numbers. Like You'll get messages like that. Um, part of this is that we want standardized information so that it's comparable across different vendors. When we publish things, our customers can make better sense of what that information is. Um, and also we don't want to spend time um, with, the aid, with the acquisition workforce having a back and forth with you about, hey, can you fix this thing before I take a look at it? And we have more substantive conversations. So the formatting, um, the formulas, the numbers, um, those are the types of things that are going to be receiving validation and business rule checks um, so that when it does get to the CS and CO, you can have a conversation about what's actually in the catalog that you're submitting and not just the formatting. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a quick slide, uh, just giving you a sense of scale using a little Venn diagram of, you know, there are about 7, 1,719 FCP vendors that are in the FCP right now, approximately. And I know this number slightly differs from an earlier number I showed you, but that's because things fluctuate. Uh, about 1,658 or 1,666 active FCP vendors, around 220, so about 18 to 20% thereabouts. Um, of that number have services mods within the last year, which means that we expect around 220 services baselines to begin as part of pilot C, which begins in mid-November, November 18th, hopefully. Um, this doesn't affect anyone who's participating in the pilot. Um, they've already gone through this, um, but for the, there are about 220 vendors, I expect this to be pretty relevant too. And they are current FCP users already. So if you are not using the FCP yet, um, this will matter, but it's going to be imminently impactful for folks um, in about one month. Um, here are the sins associated with that. So for the most part, this just kind of gives you a sense of breaking down the number, the 220 there. Um, 18 of these contracts are ITC vendors um, or they their contract is aligned with that portfolio. And these are the SINs uh, on those contracts. There are 192 contracts aligned with the GS and S portfolio. Um, there are actually 165 SINs. We just chose the top 30 to show what's showing up. Um, TTL has 10, and these are the SINs associated with it. So the note below it is just to tell you that there are certain SINs, like I know, for example, that 339920 Park is a GS and S SIN traditionally. But the contract associated with TTL um, has that set. So it's, it's probably better to stay on this side of the table, actually. Um, so you have 220 contracts. This is the breakdown by um, what portfolio they belong to. OK. I buried the lead here, right? Like, what, what is this actually going to look like for you if you're already in the Fast Catalog platform? Um, and then also, if you're not in the Fast Catalog platform yet, um, you'll actually be starting uh, on step two without that angry red box there. Um, but I'll start in step one because that's who I'm talking to right now. Uh, Pilot C, turning on the services workflow in the fast catalog platform. Then basically when it goes live, um, we'll send an email out, of course, letting everyone know that it's live. Um, but you will see in reality what happens when you log into your uh, profile. Um, beyond just the My Catalogs, once you get into the Catalog Overview, which is where you tend to do all of your catalog actions to add, change, or delete items from your catalog, the first steps will reappear. Now, if you've already baselined, the first steps goes away. First steps is there to guide you through the process of doing what you need to do to set up your account. Um, what we're going to be telling you is that, hey, because we've updated this and turned on the services workflow, you need to update your account again. And you update it 
in the seller profile. So you're going to have to say, you know, there's going to be some red text here that says catalog offerings need to be provided. Um, what that means is that you need to tell us which workflows you're using. Um, so they'll leave this button there. You click that button and you'll go to the update seller profile. Um, has a relatively minimal amount of information there, but this is where we're going to be capturing catalog offerings. Um, one thing that I tend to fall into the habit of um, that I like to clarify whenever I make any of these presentations is, excuse me, I use the word products and services, product file, services plus file. Um, what's actually really important about these templates is where they publish. Um, so if you're using the product file, products sold on advantage, the sold on advantage is the most important part of this. If you're using the product file, it's going to publish in GSA Advantage, one of those boxes that people can click through and try to buy with a purchase card. Um, so if you're using the services, it's going to publish to a price list. Um, and that means that someone wants to buy that, they're not going to be clicking on uh, something in GSA Advantage necessarily and, and providing a credit card. I know that you could conceivably click on something in GSA Advantage and add it to an RFQ. But if you're on a price list, you know you're using an RFQ uh, or if a customer knows they're using an RFQ to buy that type of service. So publishing to a price list makes the catalog available as a price list. Um, and then it puts it out there um, in the Advantage environment. And then it's most likely the process that you're gonna go through is that there's a, a request for quotation being issued by the customer um, on the basis of all the information that's out there in the marketplace. Um, and so let's say, for example, we say yes for both of them. Um, the first steps will further adjust to then ask you to complete a services baseline because it's new, you haven't done it yet. So you have to complete the baseline, resubmit the terms and conditions file, minus the pricing that's being auto-published in a price list um, to go alongside your product catalog. During this process, if you have already baselined your products, you can still modify your product catalog. This doesn't impact your ability to, mod to update and manage your products based catalog that publishes to GSA Advantage. Um, it's just to establish your services catalog, which publishes to a price list. Um, if you are a products uh, file user that's only publishing things to GSA Advantage and you don't want to um, publish to a price list, you don't have services, it's not important to you. You just enter no, hit save, and this thing goes away entirely. It doesn't tell you to do a baseline because you don't need it. Um, you can't answer no for both. <laughs> if you're in the system and you do one or the other, it's because you do one or the other. So you'll have to say yes for one of them. So that's a high level overview of the type of decision that's coming. Um, for vendors that are in the fast catalog platform already, um, I believe there will be additional training being provided uh, during upcoming vendor office hours, the regularly scheduled office hours um, closer to that mid-November date where it will, there will be a step-by-step -step walkthrough. It'll be exhaustive and detailed um, and helpful, hopefully. Um, okay. So here we have the key artifacts for managing a services catalog. The services plus file, um, which the most up-to-date version is on GSA Interact right now um, under the catalog management office group. Um, I don't think it's the most up-to-date, but it's the most up-to-date that we've made public. Um, is the template that you will be using to manage a services catalog. Um, it replaces the services and training PPT and uh, the language services PPTs. The language services PPTs have very long <laughs> names um, related to translation uh, and sort of other language services that are not translation. Um, and so we just call them language services PPT. That's what the services plus file replaces. Um, it also um, expands into territory where it hasn't gone before um, or, or any template has gone before. So first off, there's products not sold on GSA Advantage, which is exactly what it says. 
I sell this product. It's not appropriate to sell on GSA Advantage for whatever reason. The services plus file can accommodate that. Um, that's why there's the plus in the services plus file. Services plus all these other things that are not technically services, but can be captured by the services plus file. Um, there are eight catalog item types. There, there's commercial labor categories. There's SCLS, uh, service contract labor standard labor categories. Um, there are ODCs, other direct costs, um, different from how ODCs are felt on non-mass contract vehicles, ODCs as related to like marketing sins um, held by the professional services human capital portfolio. Uh, you have ancillary items, you have fixed price services and solutions, which is a big bucket. Um, you'll have products not sold on GSA Advantage and you'll have language services. I think that was eight. Um, but those are the eight different types of catalog item type. Those are detailed in the readme of the services plus file, which is the first tab. Um, it'll also tell you on the readme um, when the most up-to-date one is out there, uh, what the required fields are based upon your catalog item type. Catalog item type is important. It drives what basically drives what fields are required uh, in the services plus file. So don't go in there and think, you know, it's a big file, right? Like you don't have to go in there and fill out everything. You just fill out what's required and optional if you so choose. Um, what else? Right, downstream. Um, so beyond auto publishing that price list to the Advantage environment, it does two other things. If you have labor categories as part of your services catalog, um, we are working with a Calc Plus team to sort of, in essence, make that information available to them where they can pull it and bring it in. Um, not that this matters to you as vendors, but like right now the process for getting information into Calc is, is very manual. Um, so that makes it slow, makes it subject to human error because humans make errors. Um, whereas any services catalog that's using the fast catalog platform will have that information be uh, made available by a system to Calc, which is also a system which then can pull it in. Um, so hopefully it would eliminate um, the issues of speed um, and the capacity for human error. Um, also, if you're a TDR participant, um, this will have some impact on the sales reporting portal. Um, I think at a very basic level, it's just going to be a linkage of what the reported sale is to what you have on catalog, um, making a connection there that strengthens the program. So um, not a TDR participant, probably not very important to you. If you are a TDR participant, um, it'll have some impact on you eventually. Um, not immediately when you start using the fast catalog platform. Um, the price list. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the price list in a second. Um, there are six pilot participants who have completed their services baseline, which means there are six publicly available price lists. Um, again, this is information that is on eLibrary right now. So I'm not giving away the farm here by showing you this, um, but it's, it's the auto published list. Um, if you have one, don't put that pricing in your terms and conditions file. It's available for download in Excel format. Okay, let's take a quick look at the price list. All right, I'm going to start sharing a different screen. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. this will work. So I'm on GSA library, public application, has people's terms and conditions file, vendors' terms and conditions files. Um, the pilot centered on the 541330 ENG SIN, which is for professional engineering services. So price lists right now, um, I don't know if you noticed this formatting change in, in eLibrary, but there used to be like a little square icon that resembled paper. It had scribbles on it. Um, it was tiny. It's about the size of your pinky nail. Um, it's been replaced by something, the box with words in it. Um, maybe less elegant, but more explicit. Terms and conditions file plus price list. This is what everyone has who is not participating in the fast catalog platform and managing a services uh, catalog right now. If you wanted to, if you manage a product file, in the, the FCP, 
they're going to be able to go to view your catalog in GSA Advantage. That's where all your stuff is. Um, but otherwise, right, everyone's going to have one. That's your traditional PDF or Word document uh, with the 26 key questions and then pricing underneath. If uh, you participate in the FAST catalog platform, terms and conditions is going to be separated out from the price list. So I'm going to click on this price list. And one of my panelists, if this is not visible, um, please let me know if it's visible, say nothing. Um, okay, uh, so this is the price list, right? It's going to have the contract, vendor name, UEI, contract number. This is identifying information in case um, this price list gets shared without context. You wanna have contact information for the people, um, what year the contract they're in, uh, when the price list was generated, pretty important, few, pretty important thing to know, right? Because how old is the pricing? Um, and then the pricing itself, right? So you have the vendor name. Um, this is not a required field in the services plus file, but important to know uh, in case someone like a customer, for example, is doing market research, they wanna compare multiple price lists um, this is a standard format, so they should be able to just take pricing from one price list, put it in another, all of a sudden you're able to compare um, pricing from two different vendors very easily in an Excel format file. Think about the level of complexity there versus I'm going to a PDF, I'm copying a PDF, the pricing out of a PDF, I'm pasting it into an Excel file, I'm reformatting that in the Excel file, and then I have to go do that again however many times until I get the pricing that I want. Not fun, much faster this way. Um, and these are all fields starting in, in B, a unique catalog item ID um, is a new field introduced by the services plus file. Um, it's basically meant to uniquely identify a row within your catalog. It's really not the same thing as a manufacturing part number for services. I know some people think about it like that. It's not that. Um, and anyhow, <laughs> get off my soapbox. Um, here's all the information. Uh, note here um, that we have pricing. Um, as of price list generation date, but you also have the rest of the years of this uh, contract period. So depending on whether or not there's an escalation rate involved with the pricing that's provided, um, if there is an escalation rate, um, it'll actually show pricing populated out through this five-year period, uh, starting with the current year. So you could have a, uh, a set of pricing that shows up like, you know, it, it's not 2021 anymore, it's not 2022. Um, we're, we're in year 14, right? So if they had an escalation rate, you'd have pricing show up in columns L and M in addition to H. Um, if it's not, you just have to take this and treat it as this is the price going forward until the price changes again. And then we have other information that's typically provided. Um, bachelor's, education and experience substitution, yada, yada, yada. Um, here we have this field that's uh, fairly important when you're filling out the SPF, but not necessarily super important for a customer. Um, it says what the catalog item type is. So this is these are all commercial labor categories, um, which means you don't have to provide SCLS specific information as part of that labor category. And, and that's why a lot of this stuff is blank, right? These are all optional or even fields that you shouldn't be providing. If I'm providing commercial labor categories, I shouldn't be providing a DO occupation code. You would generate a validation error if you provided that. We didn't ask for that. Um, so, right, but if you did select an SCLS labor category, those fields would be required when you're filling out the SPF and they would show up in columns A, C, D, A, D, and A, E in the price list. Okay, that's the price list. Um, and that's just one of them. Um, as we roll out, more people will get price lists. We think it's a good thing, um, but there's also a matter of like, hey, this rolls out. Hey, I want my price list. I don't wanna keep doing things in the TNC. Um, onboarding is a sticky wicket. Um, it is hard uh, and we don't want to overwhelm our vendor support center. We want to make sure that when people have questions, they get answered and get answered well. Um, and so we can't just like take all the remaining, you know, 8,000 contracts and throw them in and go, you're all using the FCP now. Um, that would give everyone a nosebleed. Okay. I'll let you look at this for a second while I take a drink of my spin drift. This is a really important decision. Um, so because so far people have only been using the product workflow to manage their catalogs within the fast catalog platform, they haven't had to think about, should I be using the product file 
or the services plus file? Is my information only being sold on GSA Advantage or is it a good fit for a price list? Um, this document or this slide uh, and will be published on the, the help resource page um, on, on the FAST catalog platform, catalog.gsa.gov backslash help. I will be going there explicitly as part of this presentation. Don't worry. Um, you'll need to know uh, whether or not you're using the product file, services plus file. Uh, and here are some of the questions that you would want to ask yourself. Uh, am I a good fit for what? You'll notice that we're trying to get you to shy away from the price proposal template. Uh, there are a number of different reasons for that. Uh, one is that, I'll just go through the reasons. Um, the reasons are, it doesn't undergo validation and business rule checks. So before, when we said, hey, you're gonna undergo these things, it's meant to prevent uh, a, a long back and forth between you and the acquisition workforce person where you're trying to correct uh, sort of unnecessary errors, um, that, things that are formatting issues or miscalculations um, and not just like the actual, like, here's what I'm proposing. Is it a good fit for this sin or, like, you know, real conversations. Um, you're going to have to go through the Merck first. Um, also, PPTs, um, because they don't really fit into an actual workflow, do not get stored on the Fast Catalog platform. One of the real benefits of the Fast Catalog platform is its transparency um, to both vendor users and the acquisition workforce. You're both seeing the same stuff, uh, which sounds like a no-brainer, but actually, right, the way our systems are structured today, like vendors use eOffer and eMod and and acquisition workforce uses cores and FSS online, and they are different systems that don't touch, and neither person has insight into anything that's going on. So the more people get into FCP, the more that everyone can see where the process is going. Um, so that's really important. You don't, and you, but if you're using the price proposal template, that information is not going to be stored on that fast catalog platform. So issue there. Uh, and then also it's not going to automatically publish, which means you still have to go through that second layer of review where you're including a price proposal template uh, in your terms and conditions file. So those are three reasons right off the top of my head. Um, probably more are out there. Um, the product file generates a market research report called the compliance and pricing report. Um, I should just call it the compliance and pricing report. Services plus file does not generate a market research uh, file at this point. Um, something we'd like to get to eventually. Um, this is a link to table for comments and feedback that is internal. Sorry, shouldn't have provided that link and tempted you. I apologize. Um, this is one of the last slides that I have for you. Um, the PPT only workflow. So I showed you earlier the choice that is going to be provided. Are you providing a product file that publishes to GSA Advantage? or a services plus file that publishes a price list to the Advantage environment. Um, if you choose either one of those, as of right now, when you are in those workflows, you still have the opportunity to upload a PBT. It may surprise you, but it causes issues. Um, people are submitting a product file that they worked very hard to fill out, or maybe even a services plus file that they worked hard to fill out, and they're saying, this is a PBT. It's not a PPT, it's a service plus file or a product file. It doesn't undergo validation. It just goes through because um, there's no validation. And so they go, hey, I did this thing. I submitted my product file. Where is it? Well, they submitted it as PPT, so it didn't undergo any validation. It just kind of went through and it isn't stored anywhere. Um, and it happens enough uh, <laughs> that it really is going to be much more valuable to make it its own deliberate decision and its own deliberate workflow um, so that it stops confusing people, stops gumming up the works, uh, and people have a better experience using the fast catalog platform. Um, and then also, it's not always appropriate. Um, you know, if you're using a PPT for services and training, and then you try to submit the PPT, you should really be using the services plus file. Um, there are definitely PPTs that are necessary. I'm thinking folks that are using uh, travel, transportation, and logistics, TT, uh, PPTs, uh, TTL for short. PTL, PPT. Um, if you're using one of those SINs that has a unique PPT assigned to it, um, yeah, you would continue to, to use the PPT for now. Uh, we haven't accommodated that yet. And so you'd, that would be an item published to a terms and conditions file. Supporting training. Um, so you're in it, like the left side, 
the November Pilot C overview briefing. This is the overview. Um, there is a more in-depth uh, sort of walkthrough of like what is happening at every step. I'm going to click on this thing, and then I'm going to click on this thing, and there's going to be screenshots. Like it's detailed. Um, and that's what the training is going to be. Uh, it's going to be closer to that November 18th date. So um, GSA is training up, you know, super users. It's training up its mass acquisition workforce. Those are happening in November. Um, sandwiching you, the vendors uh, who are uh, starting on November 7th, going to get the Pilot C specific training. Uh, there are, I want to say, there's three parts, but there's really only two parts. Three part is like, how is that experience for you? Uh, what did we learn? Um, ask us whatever you think of Pilot C. Uh, pilot, part one and part two are, um, what is this experience in the fast catalog platform and getting more, much more in depth into how do I choose which template? Um, and so that one, I, I think we're targeting November 7th for that um, tentative, but it's actually happening during the regularly scheduled vendor office hours. So if you're going to the regularly scheduled vendor office hours for the catalog management office, because you're in the FCP already, um, just keep going to those. Uh, and that's when it'll happen. Um, if you're not currently using the FCP, you're not invited to those office hours because you don't need it yet. Um, but as soon as you get onboarded and even before then you will get the, the login. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's because you're not using the fast catalog platform. If you are using the fast catalog platform, please go to the vendor office hours for the fast catalog platform and you'll learn about Pilot C. Uh, and that will continue for at least part two and part three, right? So through November, uh, early December, and then um, it'll be the holiday season. Everyone will be happy. Okay. Um, stakeholder support. So uh, I'm going to click on that. I am going to click on that, uh, but I'm going to walk through these first. Uh, so, right. So I keep mentioning the catalog.gsa.gov backslash help fast catalog platform help resources. That's this. Um, right, it's a website, it's always available. Uh, vendor Support Center, um, there's a link to that as well. Um, you could just Google GSA Vendor Support Center if, if um, you know, for some reason uh, you don't have this available to you. Um, they are trained up and getting trained continuously on everything the Fast Catalog platform does. So ask them first. If they can't answer it and they should be able to answer most basic questions, it can get escalated to us in the catalog management office team. Um, so we're our, our fingers are always in it. Uh, the catalog management office inbox, um, that's, a, that's a direct line. It takes longer for us to respond because a lot of people use it, especially as we begin onboarding and this pilot again. Um, there are definite periods where the number of uh, sort of questions that are outstanding are, are there. It's really better to use the vendor support center and your contracting specialist or contracting officer for your initial question. If they cannot get there, um, it'll make its way to us, uh, probably through the catalog management inbox. Office hours, again, available to you if you're in the FCP, uh, and then briefings and presentations as needed. That's what this is. So let me very quickly click on this. Um, here we are at catalog.gsa.gov backslash help. Yes, we're here. Um, right now, um, and this will change in advance of Pilot C. So by mid-November, there will be services content in here. Right now, this is just product content. Um, let me tell you some of the pilot participants were not super pleased that services content was not in here for their pilot. I feel you, um, but it's gonna be there pretty soon. So people have a lot of questions about additions, changes, and deletions. Also about baselines. Baseline is the establishment of your catalog in the fast catalog platform. These are the things that keep coming up. But FAQ, it's going to do like a little search filter on the content that's below, right? And you'd get, get to the right answer and it'll start talking you through everything. The fast catalog platform vendor user guide is a reduction almost, or like a refinement of the in-depth trainings that are given on different subjects. So this was this is the thing that will have uh, screenshots and say, do this, then do this, then do this. This one kind of answers a little bit more, um, what happens if this, like, well, what, what about this? Like, what does this mean? This doesn't, the vendor user guide doesn't tell you what things mean. It tells you how to do the thing that you are supposed to do. Um, so if you're kind of like, a little feeling a little bit more experimental or you like don't understand something, 
start with FAQs. If you want to know how to do something, use the user guide. Um, these are other things are references, right? So like what characters can I use in the services plus file or, or product file? Like that's what this is. Like these, anything under the vendor user guide is more targeted for a specific thing. So catalog action is like, um, how do I link this catalog action to EMOD? Like I'm doing a, an, you know, add labor categories and services mod in emod what does that what what can i do within the fast catalog platform what catalog actions match up to that really important information but super specific um so that's the help desk um also you'll find blank templates again services plus file isn't here yet but it will be pretty soon and uh and yeah and we have links to youtube uh, with recorded trainings that's this is like where ideally you start uh, hopefully you can answer your question using this information. Um, we've been live for a year and a half now. Um, that's the questions that we get coming in are what we then drop into the FAQs. So this is battle tested in essence. Okay. Uh, I see one more lingering question. I was hoping it would just resolve itself, but it looks like I'm going to have to go and answer it. Um, so that's it. Uh, below this are reference slides, a little bit more about the price list, uh, and how will you know when there's a price list, right? So these are legacy icons that are being phased out. Uh, now things are just terms and conditions plus price list, but if you have a price list, this is what it looks like. Okay, let's see the question. All right. Zach, I'm going to answer it in the chat. It's um, okay. more about a request for, for resources when putting a, um, an offer together. I see. I see. So I'm gonna, I'll that, shoot that over to them. Thanks. Very nice. Thank you, Kate, MVP. Okay. Um, are there any other questions? Please feel free to use the Q and A. Um, that's, that's it for the presentation, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I should have thanked you earlier, but I'm thanking you now. Thank you for your, uh, your attention and your time. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, I know this wasn't a, introduction to the fast catalog platform, um, which some of you may need. Um, and if you need an introduction to the fast catalog platform, where you want to be is catalog.gsa.gov backslash help. Start with general overview, go to the training videos. Um, that's really the introduction. Um, if you're already using the FCP, um, I hope this was helpful to you understand the forthcoming change uh, that is imminent mid-November turning on the services workflow, allowing you to publish a price list to the Advantage environment. Thank you. I'm gonna stay on a little bit longer, but you can leave if you want. Well, thank you so much, Zach, Kate, and Joanne. And thank you everyone for joining us today. This couldn't have been done without you guys. You all rock and to the audience, I wanna say thank you again. You guys have been great. I love seeing the large numbers and keep them coming. Uh, we will have um, another training session next month. So look forward to it. And I will hold on because we do have time. So I will leave the um, Zoom on just to make sure there's no other questions. Just for about another couple of minutes. But feel free to drop off. Okay, the numbers are going down pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's one more. Oh, that was okay. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kate Joanne. You, you, wow. Thank you. And I think someone else, Sarah. I'm not sure if I had that's your name. Sarah Big. Yes. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. Take big care. Too. Team full of MVPs. <laughs> okay. I'm going to sign out now. Okay. Okay. Hey, thanks, Stephanie. Thank Sure, really exactly. appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you.